this morning's talk on a, the quantum leap into entrepreneurship. And before we begin anything, I'd like to enter into the silence and do a little exercise. Yes, I think close it somehow, but not completely, because if people come and open the door and close the door and open the door, it will make a sound. Does anybody have a problem with it being videoed? I have to ask you that. So, what the idea of going into a silence right now is that we want to become fully present and we want to leave everything that could be bothering us at the moment. Letting it dissolve and letting it move out of the space that we're in. Because we're here to learn about making a quantum leap and okay. quantum okay. ideas no, no. and theories are very focused. They're focused in the now, because now is where you have your potential. So just for a moment, I'd like to suggest that you uncross your legs, sit with your back straight, and just for a moment, close your eyes, and just settle into your body. Settle into the space, feeling the chair underneath you, your feet firmly on the floor. And I just want you to imagine that you are sitting in a bubble, that you are sitting in a kind of egg. It's just a bubble around you. Just remain in this space, in the silence, just bringing yourself fully present. Try as much as possible to let go of thoughts that you might have in your mind, things that you were doing before, things that you will do later. Just try to empty your mind. See if you're able to empty your mind, almost as if it is a clear, slate. You're conscious of the chair, the floor, being present in this moment. Fully present. And I'm just going to even noises come and go. You might hear my voice, there might be some kind of sound. But just allow that to be part of your relaxation process. You're just becoming fully present. And I'm going to make a sound which I want you just to allow to enter into your body without opening your eyes particularly. Just allowing the sound. To connect. To resonate somewhere in your body. You can slowly open your eyes. And you can just check in with how you feel right now. Do you feel a little calmer than when you came in, more present? Just take note of it. You are an observer of your own self. Now the next thing that I'd like you to do is to take a moment to bond within the space that you are sitting. People are coming in and that's okay. We hope that 
more people will come in and they will not disturb the space. But what I would like to suggest that you do is that you connect with the people in the room by just making some eye contact with them. These are people that you don't know. Some of you might recognize that you know each other. But try to make some eye contact. It's part of the exercise. See how you feel. Maybe you feel that you want to smile. Maybe you feel that you recognize something. Try just to make an eye contact with everyone in the room for a moment. something that we don't really do very often. We don't any longer walk down the street and make eye contact with somebody or smile. We're very busy in our daily lives, totally enclosed in ourselves, and it's sometimes good to remember, to recall that we are all here. We are all unique beings. None of us are the same in this room. All of us are different but we do share some commonality. We share something in the depth of our being. As much as we share all sorts of other things like problems, feelings, inspirations that we have. So it's very important to be conscious because we're talking about a consciousness that when you connect with people, you make some connection, you make eye contact with them. It's something that we talk about bonding. Very often, seeing that this is an entrepreneurship, very often some of us are responsible in a business. I don't know your backgrounds. And because of time, what I normally would do is to change the room, have you sit in a circle. I would have you introduce yourselves. We would have more of an interactive workshop, but these are workshops that last all day. They're not within a two hour gap. So I'm going to try and fill into this two hours as much as I possibly can. But in general, in your work sphere, take time just to note that there are other people around you. Try to become open to this atmosphere of other people who are going about their business. And at this moment, I'd like you also to open at a deeper level to the opportunity for spiritual, personal, professional, and financial gain. What am I going to talk about here? I'm going to talk about the fact that together we're going to go on a journey. Your journey began when you walked into this room. And the journey will hopefully send you to some kind of a path when you leave this room, because that is my goal. My goal is to give you information, but to also invite you to experience. I'm not only going to be talking to you, I want you to try and experience at a soul level what I'm talking about. And for those people who are not non-denominational, I would say that we're going to talk about the essential self. I want you to feel it in your essence. Because when we use the word soul, we automatically bring in a religious background. So we can talk about the essence. It's the essential self. I do not talk about the higher self. Even though Roberto Asagioli founded in psychology the higher self, to me, this idea of a hierarchy, um, there is a hierarchy, but it does not complement. The idea of an essence inside of you, a tiny drop of honey, that is inside of you, that has all the potential that is in the universe, and millions of millions of possibilities. It is beyond your personality, it's beyond your character. It is there, it's the essence of who we are and how we need to evolve as a human race. What we know today, that our planet is in danger. There are numerous problems that we're facing, not only in Greece. I'd like you to think at this moment of a unit. We are in 
Hellas. I know that the, the actual name of Greece is Hellas, and I will try to use it at times, and sometimes I will use Greek, uh, the, the, the word Greece. Um, it is a small unit. We have an entire world. We have Europe, we have Asia, we have Africa, we have America, and we are all on this tiny planet that very often we forget. We are not really conscious all the time of the fact that the planet is speaking to us, the planet is feeling. It's very sad, I think, that in the East, an H-bomb supposedly was released in the center of Mother Earth because she is alive. Why is she alive? Because she feeds us. Very simply, the Earth is alive. It's not a dead mechanistic aspect of being. It is alive. So actually putting an H-bomb there is, is a problem. But unfortunately, we are not going to be able to really solve the enormous problems that are facing us today. Global warming. We try to take care of it. Thank goodness they have world leaders have woken up to the fact that we need to be aware of it. There are a billion hungry. I was watching the news the other day, something that I don't really like to do because it is so heavy. It's a lot of heavy information on the news. But I was shocked to see when the UN went into Syria that there were faces that reminded me of the concentration camps during the Second World War. These are human beings. It, it really touched me. I said, this is 2015. Have we learned anything? Do we know what we are talking about? Are we going to awaken? Terrorism, war, population overflow, and food shortages. This is a reality, and it's going to ground you at this moment into this room, because this is the reality. We can pretend that it's not going on, but it's going on at some level, all over the planet. The daily news, God forbid if you look at it, it is full of, just take a look at the words, financial crisis, stock market crashing, downturn, slump, crash, bust. These are words that bombard you with feelings of heaviness, feeling of not being able to speak because it shuts down communication, it shuts down feelings, <coughs> and it brings in a certain amount of powerlessness. Why? Because we are not in the position to change what is happening. That is the normal feeling. How can I do something about this? There is terrorism, there is global warming, the government. What I can do is take responsibility and find myself as a center point of dynamic light. How? I'm going to take you through this journey. We're talking about disintegration, crisis. Greece is in crisis. The world is disintegrating. Maybe it is. And we have to be very careful at this moment of turning around and saying, in the disintegration process, there has to be something positive. There is no way that we cannot find positivity in disintegration. My background is education, research, psychology. People go through what we call breakdown. Oh, so-and-so had a nervous breakdown. Or so-and-so had a psychosis, psychotic attack. What we try as a transpersonal psychologist, because I'm not a clinical psychologist, I'm a transpersonal psychologist, what we try to identify the difference between the two is the following. Breakdown can become a breakthrough. When everything disintegrates, there you will find the seeds of potential. 
of course, what we're going to try and do is not come to that disintegration level. But we know it from history. There is a wave movement. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. Too many people are being labeled today as ADHD, attention, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I've been a teacher for many years. Manic depressive. Labels. We label people all over the place. Oh, you have so many symptoms. Yes, take some pills and you'll feel better. But it's not. You have to go through the process. There is a death and a rebirth. And certainly the world is in crisis at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to face the fear. Because there is a certain amount of fear. When you cannot do something and you're powerless, you have a certain amount of fear inside of you. And I've put it here as false evidence appearing real. Why is it false evidence appearing real? Because we're going to now take a true step and we're going to move into the quantum field. Because everything that we see is apparent as an appearance. <coughs> we see things, these are appearances. Each and every one of us has what I call a passport. Think about your passport. Well, maybe we, we are not using at the moment a passport to go through Europe, but we might very well be using our passports again. Your passport has a number of stamps on it in the olden days. Each place that you went to, you have a spiritual passport inside of you which means what is your upbringing, how you were brought up, what your environment has been, who your parents are. Because we inherit, we don't only inherit, as far as I'm concerned, the fact that we're tall or thin or fat or our intelligence. There are other things that are carried in the memory. We're talking about a memory. The universe is pulsating its memory. Everything that happens is recorded. Think about your computers. Think about the computer that you're giving, feeding in the information, and it is storing it. The universe works in exactly the same way. It is storing memory. And you as a body are also storing memories. So welcome to Plato's cave. Plato, let me put it this way. I think that everybody mostly in here is Greek. Perhaps we have to some different nationalities. Greece has an incredible amount of richness in its roots. I say this because I'm doing a PhD in ancient Greek myth and music. The application of it in personal, professional, and transpersonal development. Now, I am from South Africa, of Serbian background, and many other countries. So I consider myself to be a global citizen. I was born in South Africa, I live in Greece, my heart is here, otherwise I would not be working with the Greek background. And we need to understand that there are many different cultures. Unfortunately, the ancient Greek background has been lost to modern day Greeks. This is my feeling. If somebody can tell me that it's different and demonstrate it, it would be wonderful. But I think that root is extremely important. And another important point that I want to give out at this moment is, it is not any longer feasible to break down one thing in order to rebuild another. We do not have to all the time deface. If you look back in history, everybody's been doing it, the Egyptians. ISIS is doing it at the moment. Let's break down paganism, Christianity. We just destroy everything and we say we have the answer. No, because there are seeds and you can take seeds from different aspects and put them all together and then allow people to come and debate. That is something that I have and hold as a vision to have a research center one day in Greece where people can come from everywhere and we can debate and take and look for solid solutions to the problems that the world has. So in Plato's cave, everybody is chained. You only see the shadows. The light is at the back. 
you don't see the light, you see the shadows. And everybody takes this as reality. One man escapes. He leaves the cave and he sees the real world. He returns, dazzled by the light, seems more stupid than before. Presumably he has just returned to the cave and he needs time to integrate his experience outside. And everybody else tells him to be quiet because they have not experienced it. And so it is anathema. And people in general, as a human race, we do not like change. Because change means I have to really, everything will break down. It's scary. It's not, not, uh, not easy to go through change. John F. Kennedy said, the problems of the world cannot possibly be solved by skeptics or cynics whose horizons are limited by the obvious realities. We need men who can dream of things that never were and ask, why not? This is your first step into quantum entrepreneurship. Think of things that have never been thought of. If we presuppose that the potential is inside of you and there are many possibilities inside of you, think about things that other people have not thought about. And say, why not? Now, of course, I have to be a little honest with you that being alternative or out of the box is sometimes a little difficult. It's not that easy. But you build character, you build personality, and you build compassion. Because you understand that maybe you have a little bit more strength to do radical things than other people do. It's not easy to make changes just like that. But be inspired to make the change and to trust it. Of course, in order to make this change, one has to be connected to the inner self and the intuition that I have. Certainly, skeptics and cynics, I don't believe really, can change the world. And neither can somebody who lives in a box, who looks at history just in a linear fashion. No, you have to make a jump we're talking about making a leap in quantum physics out of the way that things normally work. We need to expand consciousness. Your consciousness, your ideas, your thoughts need to expand. Have a look at this picture, please. And I'm going to ask a question. What is real in the picture? Anybody want to offer? The woman is real, yes. Okay. The fish. And the glass between them. Excellent. The picture we see. The picture you see, lovely. All of us sitting here. I'm going to actually tell you that everything is real in this picture. Why? Because can I not see a reflection? Now, there's a reality in there, just the fact that the ship, the fish are, everything in this picture, especially the reflections are a certain reality, because they might be a reality to me. By looking at the different aspects, you get a multi-dimensional idea of reality. Why? Because there is no fixed reality. We know that, especially through quantum physics. Now we're going to start moving down the funnel. I won't say the rabbit hole. Looking at perception as reality. 
According to Plato, reality consists of two realms. We are talking about from then, the idea of consciousness was being explained. First, there's the physical world, the world that we can observe with our five senses. Of course, there is the sixth sense. And then he had the world that was made up of these perfect forms or ideas. According to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the more precisely the position of an electron is determined, the less precisely the momentum is known in this instant and vice versa. We're going to need some time to think about it. I'm going to use an, exp an example to make it easier. If supposedly I have an electron in the center of the room, the electron is not actually in the center of the room because quantum mechanics tells us that the electron can be anywhere in the room at any given time. Research, there's a lot of research that has been done on healing at a distance. There is no space and time continuum. If I have you in my mind and I send positive thoughts to you, the likelihood of you feeling good is really good. And it's positive. They've done tests in the States on heart patients in hospital with two control groups, control group and experiential group, sending healing. We know that there has been a change in the people who have received healing. Their ability to recuperate is much quicker. If we take an electron and I change something here and measure it in the measurement, an electron that is miles away will have the same change happen to it. So quantum physics tells us basically that everything in the world is entangled. Everything is possibilities and potentialities. Electrons in possibility reside before measurement in a, dame, in a domain of potential, where they can be everywhere and nowhere. It is only when you are measuring it that it actually will appear and be relevant. That is why we say that you need an observer. Again, bringing it down into everyday situations. I look at this glass. I'm going to make it very simple for you. And I say, oh, this glass is half empty. My perception tells me that I've only got so much water to drink. Or I can look at this and I can only see the water and that water will quench my thirst and I do not look at the amount that is in there. It depends on my perception. Perception of what is happening in the world today, what is happening in business, what is happening in terms of not being able to do what we want to do, not having enough financial support, having fear that we're not going to get a job. We need to move out into this potential where I want you to imagine that there are electrons everywhere. They are just moving. Because even the table, go back to Plato's idea, this is a table. And it is a kind of okay table. Supposedly somewhere in the universal space, somewhere there is a perfect table. And I'm going to then talk about the fact that there might be one perfect table and multi-perfect tables. Tables that are like this. Tables that are like that. We don't know what the shape of the table is. All those are ideas that are in what Carl Jung called the collective unconscious. We tend to put them out there. Where they are, we don't know. So to a large extent, if I become a responsible human being, I immediately have the possibility of influencing, because I must have the possibility, according to quantum mechanics, 
of influencing what is in the collective unconscious. So what I send out there is supposedly what becomes my reality based on my perception. So if I trust a process, but I have to fully trust it, I can't be half trusting. That is supposed to manifest because electrons are not bound by space and time. They are non-local communication that happens instantaneously. Research has shown that there have been people who have been diagnosed with cancer. People that have been given very short lifespan to live and they have gone into spontaneous remission. Friday I'm at the doctor, I have a tumor. Monday I go to the doctor, there is no tumor. Now we have documented cases of this. Because, and certainly it has to be that the person has at that moment so much potential, usually through disintegration, that is your best moment. If you think about it for a moment, think about all the fantastic people who composed music. Einstein, who supposedly had major problems when he was at school. A lot of them were on the borders of sanity, madness. Yes, of course, it's a, it's a journey that will take you through. In order to come down into the depths of Hades, believe me, you need to come down into the depth to know the, the top and the paradisical moment of bliss. That is why we talk about a spiritual journey as not being one that is easy. Is it worth taking? Absolutely yes, because you are looking for your meaning in life. What is your meaning in life? Why are you here? Is it just to get married and have children? God forbid if that's the only purpose that we have in this planet. We must have something deeper. In order to find all the potential that I have and then certainly influence what is happening in the collective unconscious. Making a contribution. That is where each and every one of you, I'm giving you a seed right now, that you have potential to change whatever is happening. First of all, you need to start with self. The observer. Have a look at these two pictures for the moment. Let's start with the one on the left. Now, some of you might know it. If you know it, kind of like, wait, but what? does everybody see on the left? An old, lady. An old lady. Who sees the old lady? Okay. Carry on looking at it. Let's see. What else do you see? A young woman. Yes. A young woman. Three quarters. Yes. <coughs> and of course, do you see the young woman? Yes, with the hat and the feather. Exactly. Have a look at it until you can see both. Has everybody seen both? The old woman and the younger woman? The old woman. The old woman, here is her nose, here is her mouth, and here are her eyes. hair, kind of like a hat, a nose, and her mouth. See? So here is this powerful moment that we see things differently. Again here, this one is a little easier. It's a rabbit. And what else? And a duck. The rabbit and the duck. So, how does consciousness embody itself? Consciousness embodies itself where the observer, everything is a possibility. First of all, we have to start with the same. Imagine consciousness 
as a pool in which instead of looking at it as higher and lower, consciousness is a pool. Within this pool, you have every potential and possibility that there is. Therefore, we can say that everything is a possibility. This table is a possibility. This is a possibility. The chair is a possibility. It's one possibility. It is not the most perfect. There are many degrees. The observer, I am also a possibility. Because as you are looking at this picture, you see that there are two completely different things. It changes and it shifts. Now let me tell you something about the brain. The brain is a machine, not unlike your computer. And it has millions and billions of neurons in your brain. And what happens is that the neurons are firing all the time, and when they fire, they usually wire together. That is not very good from the point of view of what? My first initial understanding of something, the brain has wired together, and it will give me the information from the first aspect. For example, I see a young girl and I'm used to seeing a young girl because the brain is giving me that information. Now I am challenging the neurons that are firing within my brain to look at it in a different way. So I have to look and find a certain amount of depth within what I'm looking at. So if you consider that everything is a possibility, we know that waves collapse into particles through quantum theory that there is an entangled interaction. The brain is allowing you to perceive something in a specific way. If the brain is allowing you to perceive something in a specific way, your brain has